So basically, we are dedicating little uh, political attention to those issues. And this is why I'm even more happy to have with us a, a prestigious policymaker and a very specific one, because as I said, you're linking in your role climate change and food security, which is uh, quite rare. I'm sure that we are going to be enlightened, Minister, by uh, your, your experience. Thank you so much. I'd like to start first by thanking World Policy Conference for having us here and talking about a very important subject. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard me speaking before <coughs> and linking food systems with climate change. Uh, it's, it's a must because as some of my fellow uh, panelists mentioned, a third of global greenhouse gas emissions is coming from our broken food systems. Um, I feel already much has been talked about, about the situation we're in, the shocking numbers, the challenges that we have. I want to talk about solutions. I want to talk a little bit about the light at the end of the tunnel. I think the UAE is very much known for being a beacon of hope. And so I want to bring hope. We must do three things in my eyes. Countries need to plan more properly when it comes to food systems transformation. I'm going to for every point I make, I'm going to show you a little bit of an example of what we do in the UAE. We have a national food security strategy. We have the Emirates Food Security Council that governs all the programs <coughs> we're doing under the strategy to make sure we're implementing. We're also always checking internationally how we are benchmarking ourselves. So we're looking at the Global Food Security Index. And by the way, the UAE has become number one ranking in the Global Food Security Index this year for the MENA region. Why? Because we've put a lot of effort into planning, understanding, improving. There are a lot of areas which need improvement, such as R&D. We need to put more investment in R&D for, for innovations. And so this closed back system, this, this feedback that we're getting is really important. So the planning is really important. Countries must plan because food security, friends, it's not just agriculture, by the way. Yeah. It's food and loss uh, waste. It's nutrition. It's food safety. It's the way we consume. It's the way when you go to a supermarket, what you buy, what, you, what ends up in the bin, that has a huge influence on our food systems today. And most of us always think of agriculture, agriculture, but actually there's a huge part on the demand side as well. And changing and reflecting the way we are consuming. I myself, the last three, four years, because I've been involved a lot in the food system conversation, I've changed a lot about how I eat, I've tried to get my family to be influenced as well. The young generation is so much easier to influence, by the way. The elder generations, I'm still working on it. Um, but it, this is what's happening in my own family and household. So now think of how to do this in a community, in a country. It's not easy. Then I think of the second point, and a lot of you mentioned this, investing in innovation. And I'm not just saying investing in innovation, but being also innovative. So the word innovation is huge. And I'll give you some examples. So we, in the past years, um, for example, in Abu Dhabi, we have the Abu Dhabi Investment Office uh, under the Radan 21 initiative, which is an Abu Dhabi accelerator program. We've invested more than $150 million in ag tech companies to come attract them to the UAE to start growing clean foods all year round in the hot, arid environment that we're in. We are a water-scarce country. We don't have much arable land. And with that, we must turn to innovation. And we're so proud today, when you go to the supermarkets, you see berries grown in the UAE, salmon, quinoa, vegetables of all sorts, uh, fruits are coming up as well. And I'm sure in the very near future, we're going to see grains being grown in closed system farms. This is going to be a breakthrough, ladies and gentlemen, because this means we're not dependent on the climate that's happening around us. It's a closed farm where water is recycled and you don't have to use chemicals. So this kind of innovation, there must be more investments done in this. And we are doing this and there's more we need to do. And then when I talk about being innovative, we're talking about we must ensure trade is open and no restrictions. And by the way, the UAE is very dependent on global food supply. 90% of our food comes from outside. But now I think of, okay, 
how do I not put any restrictions uh, and protect local production, but still try to encourage local production to grow in an environment that is hard? You have to innovate. So we did something just a few weeks ago uh, during our annual government meetings. The UAE holds every year an annual government meeting where we bring all the uh, federal and local entities together and discuss challenges. And what we decided was government entities the big consumers, such as the police, the armed forces, the hospital authorities, the ones that buy a lot of food and that are under the government control, they must buy locally. Let's not touch the trade, let the trade keep going, but where you have a hands-on on your procurement and what you can buy, this is where you can encourage that a certain percentage of certain food items are bought locally. This I call innovation. Then the third point is about partnerships. I can, I keep saying partnerships, partnership, partnerships. Let's look at an example, uh, Bustanica is a vertical farm that is now operating in the UAE, one of the largest vertical farms in the world. This is a partnership with Emirates Catering Group, and I'm sure many of you have flown in with some of our national airlines, Emirates Airlines being one of them. You are now gonna enjoy salads coming from this vertical farm. It is now, more commercially viable and more profitable for Emirates Catering Group to get their greens, microgreens, uh, lettuce, salads from these vertical farms here in the UAE than importing them. So the business model is changing. This is a partnership between Emirates Catering Group and Crop One. Uh, this is a company from the US. We also have a lot of ag tech companies in the UAE that were supported because we're really supporting the ag tech ecosystem. They're now going out to Singapore, for example, to try and build the ecosystem there because we're now basically uh, trying to showcase or showing technologies from the UAE from a hot arid climate on how technologies work in this space to other countries that are facing the same challenges. So these are the three key areas, plan, innovation, investing or being creative and innovative and partnerships. The, this for me is what countries must look into. It's so important that also during the, the COP28, by the way, as much as people are talking about the energy and the just energy transition, food systems transformation must also be on center stage with the energy uh, transformation uh, discussions. It's really important. And this is what we're doing because the UAE is really taking COP28 as a country um, effort. We're all trying to put everything together because everything is interlinked, water, energy, food, uh, waste, it's all interlinked together. And we're really making sure and hopefully we see many of you there as well uh, next year at COP28, where we're really linking all this together and showcasing, showcasing projects and solutions that are working. Remember, friends, things need to be easy. Every country has different challenges. Every country has certain uh, resources that others don't. So that's why it's so complex the way it is. And by the way, solutions are there. You will be surprised at how many innovations and solutions there are that can really fix the broken systems we're in today. We have to do the matchmaking, we have to have the discussions, we have to have partnerships like aim for c is another one that we're very proud of. The UAE and the US have spearheaded the Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate. We have about 275 partners on board, uh, more than 8 billion US dollars of, of commitments into this, into this food systems transformation. So we need to see a lot more of these uh, things happening. Thank you. Uh, no, well, thank you very much, Minister, for having so brilliantly uh, introduce us to uh, how you, in a such structured way, you address the uh, challenge or, uh, of having to import most of your food and uh, working on that with this extremely structured policy around uh, uh, planning, innovation, partnerships, uh, which I think is very uh, in inspiring. Uh, while you were uh, speaking, you also addressed the issue of demand. Uh, and uh, in Danone, my colleagues have uh, 
uh, a very strong policy around saying the best way you can change as people the world is by changing the way you eat. Of course, I think they have the products that can help you changing the world, but there's something very true about it. Uh, and uh, many of our responses uh, are there. And, but innovation, as you so rightly said, is also something that is uh, often underestimated and just briefly sharing with you that even in the poorest African countries, incredible innovations are taking place. You know, we are funding in, uh, with my shop in, uh, in, in Senegal, a wonderful startup uh, on baby nutrition using only local products. We are funding in uh, Burkina Faso, uh, another startup which is using and raising uh, worms for protein production, uh, completely changing the way a poor country can access uh, protein. So many things, you know, in Kenya, we are funding vertical agriculture, uh, which is also one of the ways uh, uh, one can completely change the issue of land availability. So, so many things are taking place uh, that can also provide hope. And thank you very much for having uh, sent this signal of hope. So